Okay, it is hot. It is steamy. And they are working on the house. So any noise that you hear in the background is just construction workers. I'm gonna try to keep it to um, I'm gonna try to keep my eye on what's going on with language and everything, but this is gonna be a two-part video. Um, the first part of the video is gonna be a book review, and the reason I'm gonna do a book review is because I'm actually going to try to implement some of the things in this book in video number two, which is where we're gonna start putting together some soil blocks and starting some seeds to get this fall garden underway. Uh, so I have my, my book. It came, I did order this off of Amazon, um, and the book, the reason I ordered this book is because our ultimate goal is to be a small local community market farm. Like that is one of the main goals. Besides self-sustainability, um, home food production, food storage, um, we do, I do want to eventually be able to sell to, um, my community so I purchased the tiny but mighty farm um, and I'm gonna have to put my regular glasses on hold on because I can not read without them and the Sun is glaring so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to put them under my sunglasses so it's just gonna be a minute it's so hot. like it is super hot okay let's see if this will work for me um, Jill Reagan wrote this from Whispering Willow Farm, um, and it is supposed to be, I will pick that up, it is supposed to be a guide on how to maximize your crop yield and production for a small acreage homestead. Uh, here, the property, the total amount of acreage that we have is four acres. We do not utilize all four of that at this time for crops. Um, we, we had a house fire, so main priority has been, um, you know, getting the construction and everything going. But we are, once all of this is done, we're going to work on expanding. Um, I would say we have a large garden area, but we don't utilize every single solitary square foot in here. And we have been rebuilding our soil, trying to bring the nutrients back in. So hopefully um, this fall and winter, we are gonna be able to focus on some of those crops that are gonna give us a higher yield um, for personal use, but also to sell as well. So some of the things that she covers in her book, what kind of mini farmer do you wanna be? How do you plan and prepare your growing spaces? Should I grow in ground raised beds or containers? We do all three and you do have the option to do all three of those. You do not have to restrict yourself to one type of growing medium. Um, do I need a greenhouse or a high tunnel? Are there any special tools I need to invest in? What are the best vegetables, herbs, and flowers for me to start with? And how do I sell my product to others? So, with that being said, I'm going to actually take this so we can go through this book together. Um, the reason I've brought it into the garden with me today is because she does have some charts in here uh, that I want to, I'm going to kind of make my own based off of her sample and see if I can make that work for me. I really would like a workbook. To go along with this or sample sheets or, or uh, not sample sheets but like workbook pages um, but I'm just gonna hand draw them at this point based off of the sample that's in here so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna share this book with you we're gonna do a review um, and I'll tell you what I think and how I think this might be able to help meet my goal so let me get the camera flipped around and we'll flip through it okay i'm gonna try to focus um i will do a full flip through of this book but i want to try to focus today for the pages that i'm going to utilize in the greenhouse with starting seeds first of all i do want to say the pictures are beautiful um they really took care in making sure that the pictures were just really beautiful and first thing i'm gonna say right off the bat is 
I have never gotten a Brussels sprout harvest like this ever. I've never even gotten Brussels sprouts to grow. Like I've gotten the plants to grow, but it's never done anything. And that makes me jealous. All right, so let's go ahead and So with the table of content, it's she does kind of label her chapters out for you. Um, this is helpful because you can skip, you know, obviously it's a table of contents. You can skip to whatever you need. For example, I'm probably going to skip chapter five. I might graze over it, but we already do in-ground raised bed and we are starting in indoor growing. So, um... You know, we have a greenhouse that's been, it's under construction. It's been on our list of things to do for a while. So I might just graze that chapter. This chapter, I'm going to read. And this chapter, I'm going to read. Um, but some of the other ones, I might just skip over and see, you know, exactly how that's going to pertain to our journey. So they really did focus on getting really nice quality pictures in this book. Now this did strike me, um, this picture right here is a layout of how to, when you're thinking through your long-term plans, I've done one by hand, but one thing that I do want to do is I want to take the drone and uh, fly over as well. We don't have areas specifically designated to animals. Actually right now we're only focusing on one small area at this time. So. This is something that kind of gets me thinking about what are we going to do with the rest of our property? Because we have quite a bit of property. We don't have to just have a fruit farm in the back. Like we could do a small areas and kind of break it up in sections like that. So small farm values. And then here she kind of talks about a market farm um, and selling to the community. considerations for your tiny farm value and vision so I'll probably read that what are your farm pillars what are your environmental pillar values what are your community values local economics so things like that um, okay and here she gives a farm cost analysis worksheet um, this is good things to think about if you're working with a budget but what we have done is like we didn't jump right into this I don't have grow lights um, we already had a tool shed we already have electric and water which was already here we didn't have to put any of that in so some of this isn't going to pertain to us but it's definitely things that I need to take into consideration And then uh, she talks a little bit here about creating a plan. What kind of farmer, gardener do you want to be? So avoiding burnout, that's important. You know what burns me out? Summertime. Okay, so here she tells you a little bit about an annual, a perennial, and a bi-annual. So that you kind of know exactly what those plants are, why grow edible perennials, so there's some things in here that I will definitely peruse, um, types of growers, hobbyists, I mean I guess that this is kind of talking about what kind of farmer you want to be, if you already know that, um, it may not, that chapter may not be helpful to you. So what is a market garden? This is going to be a chapter that I'm going to read. Um, and pay a little bit more attention to. Bigger doesn't always equal better. 
So here's one of the charts. Let's see if I can turn this so you can see it better. Here's one of the charts I was talking about um, that I'm going to try to recreate. It's succession planting. That is something that I just have not done. And my problem with succession planting is... I just don't do it. We get the initial planting out there and it's going good and then it gets hot and I quit. So I'm going to um, utilize this and create my own worksheet of that in my journal. Um, and then a rotation plan. This is something that Steve and I have been talking about. This is an example. Um, and how she's showing you like how you let your areas rest so you have a winter rotation and a spring rotation but if you look to this page when you get to your summer and fall see here there's spots that are empty that she may be resting and then here, this whole row is empty down here, but over here, it was not. So, for winter and spring, it was not, but for summer, it's resting, and then she's replanting in fall. So, I think that's a good chart to, um, to help you kind of just keep track of, of how you're rotating your soil, because you do have to let it rest. Mm. Again, I just think the picture quality is really pretty. I mean, they're beautiful pictures of her farm and what she's doing. I, I agree with that. There's nice drawings. Uh, here she talks a little about, about, about ooh, talks about heirloom leave this chapter I want you to leave this chapter having a clear idea of goals visions purpose behind why you are growing food chapter on soil so that's kind of more about um, soil health I don't really find that helpful as to how I mean yes you need healthy soil and longevity of soil but I um, I don't find that helpful in as teaching me how to be a market farm that's really what my my purpose was for ordering this book was I really wanted to get her inside tips because she has definitely succeeded in creating a small market farm and she did it on an acre or a little over an acre before they purchased their new farm which is four acres I think um, and so that's really what I wanted to tap into with this book I really wanted to get her personal insight on how like what's the best way to do that now I will say this is a good chart to keep track of how you're amending your soil and what you're amending it with um, so I do like that Okay, here's the chapter about in-ground, raised bed, all of that stuff. I don't um, really think that pertains to me. It does have some pros and cons for each one. Growing from seed. So again, this is kind of um, this is kind of beginner. Like if you're just getting started farming, I personally was looking more for a book that was again gonna give me some insight on how she really took it to the next level and made a market farm. Um,
seed sowing tracking. I kind of do that, but not on such an organized um, level. So let I might try to implement that. Issues. I mean, that's a good list to have. Seed starting issues, things that you may not know. Again, if you are a new, if you're new to gardening. So it definitely has newer to gardening tips. Some of this I already do. I already know. So it's not helping me personally in that regard. Cultivating family tools. So this is tools. Um and efficient systems to grow on. Establishing systems. Um, I refer to systems as a set of procedures we will follow on the farm. It's organized structure, done the same way over and over. So this is more about how she organizes her farm. They continue, you know, like I said, it's a it's an organization. For example, she says here, on Tuesdays we harvest flowers. Every Tuesday at 6 a.m., the crew is ready to go out and we start with the high tunnel and then we work our way to the raised beds. And she starts way earlier than I do because she gets up. She has a daily chore chart. So she breaks it down Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So this chapter is really the chapter that I was looking for. I would have liked to have seen it expanded beyond just one chapter. Five year planning and beyond. Like that's just a small little blurb. What is a farm consultant? You most use tools, okay. Getting organized. Time management. Two liter growing system. See now that I would like to read about to see what she says about that. Two liter system, you prune and train your plants so that they have two, oh, never mind. That's the whole tomato um, situation. We've, we're trying to just perfect one liter growing system. Um, I can't even do that right yet. So I'll still read that and see if I can improve my personal standards on it or use of it. Season extenders. Oh, I'm skipping a bunch of pages here. Growing with seasons. What to grow in a high tunnel. I don't even have a high tunnel yet. I hope to one day have a high tunnel. Definitely not there yet. I'm just happy to have a greenhouse. So that's definitely talking about um, different systems. Mm, shade cloth. So like this is still again. I still find this more of a beginner type book. I find that a lot of the information in here um, is going to be things that I already know. Okay, now this chapter, know your market and their needs. Like this chapter I'm going to read. Find your niche, run a cost analysis. Finding customers, like see, that's what I want to know. Like, how did you even break into this? How did you put your information out there? So this is it, appealing to chefs. What is a food hub? This is the chapter, I, I got this whole book. The Backyard Grower, let's see, The Urban Farmer. I got this whole book for one chapter, really. So that's um, acknowledgments and then there's some note pages, but I don't write in books. 
so I won't use those either. Um, so yeah, that's the Tiny But Mighty Farm by Jill Reagan from Whispering Willow Farms. She does have a channel on YouTube. You can purchase this book on Amazon. Um, it was on sale when I bought it, so normally it's like $26, but it was $10 off, so I got it for like $16 something. Um, and I would say my overall thoughts on this book, just from doing this quick flip through and my little bit of looking when I first purchased it, I would say that this is a great book for someone who wants to get started, who doesn't know much about gardening in general, um, and kind of where to start and how to start utilizing uh, some of the selling aspects of it too. What I was kind of hoping for was just a little bit more in depth on how to um, a little bit more information on really how to start a market farm. Like how do you, how did you break into this? Like how did you get this started? So uh, I still say it's a 10 out of 10. I would definitely recommend this book to anybody who's looking to get started in farming for a purpose, either for homesteading, food production, for your family, food preservation, homesteading. And I would even recommend it for anybody who's breaking into this to start a small market farm and uh, market to your community. So thanks Jill for producing this book. It really is beautiful. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed my review of the Tiny But Mighty Farm. And I definitely would recommend checking it out. Like I said, I believe it is on sale at this very moment on Amazon. Um, so if you were looking to purchase a book you know, I would, I would recommend this one. Um, thanks for hanging out with me while I went through this book and, uh, I hope to see you on the next video where I actually get some, some seeds started. Take care guys.